Hey guys, so I have my Defender for about a year and two months now, so I thought I would do a long-term owner's review. In this video, I will talk about what it's like to live with it on a daily basis, and I'll be covering about the qualities and the issues that I have with this truck. Starting off with performance and handling, this is a 2023 110 version P300, meaning it is a four-cylinder turbo engine with eight-speed transmission, 300 horsepower, 300 pounds of torque, I mainly drive on-road, but if you follow my videos, you have seen that I have taken an off-road multiple times. I have driven it in below freezing temperature as well as over 100 degree weather. If you want to know more details about the specs of my Defender, click on the top right-hand corner to check out that video. The engine and transmission are okay. Not the smoothest, not the fastest. It is just okay and good enough, but if you care about performance, the six-cylinder might suit you better. I would love a V8, but it is stupid expensive with the fact that the 110 model starting price is at 60 grand. They're asking almost double for a V8. However, I did test drive one to compare to a G63, but I will save that for another video. I literally drive this SUV every single day. It was a must for me to have this truck with the air suspension pack. I love the convenient feature call to access height that lowers the car for you to get in and out easily. Plus, it looks pretty aggressive sitting lower. Handling is okay, steering is precise, way better than the Rubicon that I had before for sure. Being on air suspension, it's floaty is what I would call it. It's comfortable on long trips and it comes in handy off-road because I can raise it for more ground clearance. I love the off-road features and capabilities of this truck. I don't have any complaints in that department, but I also don't do hardcore off-roading. This Defender uses premium gas. On paper, the MPG is 1720, but in real world, of course, it's way less than that. I just don't really keep up, but I usually fill up every week and a half. The car shows averaging 12 miles per gallon. Not sure how accurate that is. So I love the driving position. I feel like I'm sitting pretty high. I also love sports cars, but I don't know if I can ever go back to the low seating position after owning this thing. This is a pretty tall SUV, so it gives me a great view beyond the dash. I'm about 5'7 and I fit comfortably in the driver's seat. It's very easy to drive this thing for me. The window line is pretty low, so it makes me feel like I don't have any blind spots. Plus, I also have the 360 camera, so I can always turn those on if I'm ever in a tight spot. I had a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon before, and this is almost the same size as that. I never feel like this is a huge SUV that I can't park somewhere or that it's too long. This fits inside my standard size garage just fine. In fact, this somewhat reminds me of my Jeep. It's rugged, it has luxury features, but it's not fully a luxury SUV, or at least my version, but definitely more comfortable than a Jeep. If you get a fully spec V8 version that is over 100 grand, it will probably feel more luxurious. I feel like they use better materials inside the cabin. I have heard from a guy who has this truck that came from a full-size Range Rover that said this is different and that he'll probably go back to a Range Rover. I guess to some people, it might not be luxurious enough. I chose to get the family pack to get the third row and there's not a lot of leg room to make it comfortable for long periods of travel, but for short distances, it has come in handy from time to time if I need to fit seven people. The second and third row seats are manual folding Majority of the time, the third row is down and folded. When it comes to comfort and convenient, I have almost everything that I need. I have the panoramic roof, I have leather seats, I have heated seats, um, I have the three zone climate control. I have the 400 watt Meridian sound system and it's okay, it's not great. Actually, one of the problems that I have with this truck is the audio system. Not sure if it has to do with Bluetooth, but randomly one of the speakers will not be working. In order to fix the problem, I have to shut the car off and let the car reset itself. And that takes about six minutes for it to go to sleep completely to reset. Once the car resets, all the speakers will start working again. It's annoying when I am on the go and in a hurry. I can definitely tell when one of the speakers is not working because you can hear the sound only from one side of the truck. I tried to replicate the problem so I can take it to the dealership and have them fix it, but I can't find what the cost or the pattern is because it would happen so randomly. So if I can't replicate the problem, hell for sure the dealership is not going to do anything about it. So that brings me to the quality about this Defender. 
I am such a sucker for Jaguar Land Rover designs. Um, they designed some of the most beautiful and iconic cars. It's just the quality and the technology just don't match up to the design. If you followed my car journey, the first F Type I had was a Lemon. I drove a 2019 four size Range Rover and pointed out some issues with that SUV. Click on the top right hand corner to watch that video. So for such an iconic brand, it's disappointing when they still can't get the quality up to par. My first problem after coming home from the dealership, driving it for a couple of days, I noticed when I'm coming to a stoplight, the car puts itself in neutral randomly. So the first time I took it to the dealer, they couldn't replicate the issue. They said they did some software update and gave me back my car. So of course, on my driveway home, it happened again. And I tried to take it back to the dealer, but they didn't have a loaner car for another month. I was pissed because this is a safety issue. If the car can put itself into neutral, what's stopping it from putting itself into reverse or drive? So I got the manager involved, and of course, for some magic reason, they had a loaner car ready next day. They did another software update, and this time they actually fixed the problem. I mentioned earlier in the video about the speakers. They're not bad, but they're not good also. Uh, not sure why Jaguar Land Rover still uses Meridian, but compared to like the Bang & Olufsen or Burmester, the Meridians are just not quality. Also, depending on the type of songs, the sounds will get distorted because the speakers can't handle certain frequencies. I can't show it to you on video because the songs are copyrighted. Bluetooth issues. So this has the wireless CarPlay and I use it 98% of the time when I'm driving. There are certain paths and roads that when I pass by that will cut off the Bluetooth completely and it happens every single time I pass by these roads. Um, it has to do with some certain frequencies of that area but it is the weirdest thing and it happens every single time. I have to drive past that area and connect my Bluetooth with CarPlay again. The rear camera washer hose was leaking for a while. It's not spilling out, but there's droplets constantly. How I found out is every morning when I back out of my garage, there's this little bubble water jiggling around in the camera. The annoying thing is the dealership. So I waited two months to get an appointment with Elono Car. The service man didn't think that there's any issues with this, so they didn't want to remove the bumper and reset the hose, so I just gave up. Another annoying problem I have is the rubber seal around the doors. When they are dry, they make these rubbing noises around the doors inside the cabin. So to take care of this problem, I have to lubricate them so there's no friction. The solution works for a couple of weeks, so once it is dry, I have to loop them up again to get rid of the noise. The safety technology in this truck is outdated. I really only depend on the cameras and the blind spot monitor. I have the adaptive cruise control, but it's not smooth, so I only use the regular cruise control. The emergency braking feature is so late, by the time it kicks in, you're already in a collision. I have had several occasions where the warning comes on, but it was so delayed that I wouldn't count on it. With any problems that I have, I try to research and solve them myself first before asking for help or taking it to the dealership. I'm not the only one with these problems, by the way. Um, there's a whole forum with people with the same issues. So what bugs me about the dealership is that they waste my time. Like if it wasn't an issue, I wouldn't bring it in. Um, I hate driving a loaner car. I bought my car so I can drive my car, not have my car sit at the dealership, waiting for them to come up with a solution um, or even to just to work on my car. All of these are just minor problems, but I feel like for a truck this price range, I shouldn't have these problems. These problems shouldn't even exist. With all that said, I still love, love my Defender. Um, I love the way it looks. I love the design. I think that's why I'm willing to put up with troubling quality. Um, the size is perfect. It fits in my garage. I love the right height. Um, I do have aftermarket wheels on it. I have the roof and the side graphic wrapped. It's fun to drive on-road and off-road. I drive the majority of the time by myself, so I consider it spacious. If I need to fit something large, I can put all the seats down and it fit inside the cabin just fine. It is not as comfortable as a Range Rover, but it's not as rugged as a Jeep Wrangler. Um, it's like a mixture in between, um, and I feel like that fits me really well. I hope Jaguar and Land Rover are working on improving the quality of their cars because there are new cars out such as the Toyota Land Cruiser and the Lexus GX that are pretty darn good looking and are just as capable and I'm sure their quality is way better. 
I know I have a huge service coming up at 21,000 miles, and this is the first service that includes an oil change for this truck. I guess with these new cars nowadays, the oil can last that many miles. So my service advisor told me it will be around $2,000. We'll see if that is the total. As of right now, it doesn't sound so bad for first service. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I have more car videos coming. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And until next time.